Well, this is the engine compartment of a 1968 uh, Plymouth GTX. Uh, this thing is just such a neat, neat car. Um, it is an original car. It's it, uh, never been hit. It does have the fender tag still intact on it, which coincides with the serial number. Uh, there's no trauma whatsoever to the uh, front uh, radiator core support. Heavy duty radiator, 26 inch. The original style Presto Light distributor with a new vacuum advance uh, module on it, uh, just the way it came from the factory. The, uh, the car has a set of uh, uh, column inch and seven eighths ceramic coated headers on them as opposed to the cast iron exhaust manifolds. Cast iron intake manifold, um, Carter AFB, Edelbrock um, AFB carburetor on it, the correct uh, um, cap for the valve pan cover, the correct air cleaner that would have been released with this car in 1968. Uh, the engine, I believe, is a correct motor in it. There are no numbers down by the oil pan, but we're going to check it for date code. But it does say HP 440 on top, so it's definitely an HP motor. And if it's 68 vintage, it's the only thing it could have been was uh, a 68 GTX. It's the only thing it came in, that or a Dodge, or uh, that's it. Um, new water pump on it, new belts. One, two, three, four. Seven blade uh, fan on it. Not a uh, clutch fan, but it does have seven blade fan on it. It does have power steering. It does not have power brakes, but it does have a dual stage master cylinder on it. The inner fender panels in this car are just as clean and fresh as you'd ever, ever want to hope to find on them. A uh, new battery that uh, uh, Donnie just put in the car. Has the correct style washer bottle on the passenger side fender, the correct horn. And you can see nothing in the front end of this car has been disrupted through the years. Uh, it's correct uh, color of uh, uh, Chrysler Turquoise for 1968. They turned to orange in 69. Uh, everything on this car is just as fresh and clean as could be. There's no, uh, there are no oil leaks whatsoever evident on top of the motor from the valve pans. Of course, there's none from the intake. There's no oil even going to it. Um, timing chain covered the same way. I see absolutely no leakage whatsoever on it. The correct style Presto Light uh, tan distributor cap has a set of aftermarket high silicone plug wires on it, coil mounted just where it should be for 68. Uh, correct fran shroud also for 1968. Correct hoses on top and bottom. Uh, really nice looking car. Really great clean engine compartment does have your uh, isolator, heat isolator, hood pad, whatever you want to designate it. Has a new uh, electronic uh, unit for the uh, voltage regulator. Ballast resistor also appears to be new. Uh, everything in this engine compartment, oh, uh, heat still hooked up to the passenger compartment. So if this would go to one of our northern states, then it does have heat hooked up. Uh, anybody that's down here in the south, Generally, they disconnect those hoses. They take them off, put a little loop on it, and that's it. Because they don't want any heat going into that uh, passenger compartment. Absolutely none. Uh, even though you don't have the heater on uh, down here in the south, that hot water is still circulating underneath the dash. and still radiating heat out from under that dashboard. And that's why most of the cars that we do have in here have those disconnected. But they can be reconnected in the event that it went north. Uh, anyway, it's a great engine compartment. Um, um, the original equipment motor that came in it. Um, fender tag still uh, intact. Just a nice clean setup. New rubber uh, seal that goes up against the uh, uh, core support to jam all the air through that radiator that you can. Uh, it's a great, fantastic clean engine compartment. We'll go around the rest of the car for you now. Hi, you're in Daytona Beach, Florida at the Hangster site. And uh, today our guest on the floor is a 1968 Plymouth GTX. Uh, gentleman's Roadrunner. This thing's got a lot more pizzazz than the standard Roadrunner did. But we're going to go over it with you and show you everything we can aesthetically on the outside. We'll do the undercarriage, the interior, we'll do everything for you. Try to present this car as well as we possibly can to you. Gap on the hood to the fender, really nice, eighth of an inch. And you can see where it goes up to the uh, cowl panel the same way. Absolutely as nice as you'd ever want to find. Same thing on this side, an eighth of an inch. Very, very precise. Paint on this car is definitely above driver quality. Someone spent a lot of time uh, in putting this uh, uh, yellow paint on this car. It is really, really a nice, 
a little bit high on each end. The hood has to be adjusted down. That's what we have to do. Uh, Plymouth designation on the front. There's no patina whatsoever on it. The, um, someone has chosen to paint these black. These are actually from the factory painted yellow, and this would have been this inset would have been black where it says uh, 440 on it. But uh, a little more character to it. You know, people do what they want with these cars through the years. The um, uh, aluminum anodization around your headlight buckets is just as it was when it was new. Same thing with around the grill. This side's the same way. Really nice and clean. Uh, the grill itself, no chunks missing, everything nice and clean and, and fresh looking. No cracks in the uh, plastic at all on it. Filler panel in the front. No rock chips or dents or anything whatsoever in it. Bumper fitment is. That guy's right on the money. That is as nice as you're going to find one of those. We've been really hitting these things right on. And guys that put these together have been really paying a lot of attention. Height-wise, it's just where it should be. The chrome on the bumper is in the front. This is as nice as you'd ever want to find. I don't see any stone marks or chips or anything through the years. Um, amber parking lights in it. Top of the bumper. There's no, no marks whatsoever in the uh, chrome. Um, nice front bumper, nice front end of the car. One adjustment on the hood. And uh, other than that, you got a perfect nose on the front of this guy. Let's go down the side, see if we can find you there. Okay, driver's side of our GTX 1968. Round side marker light, 68 only. Really as nice as you'd ever want to find paint-wise. Very nice fit and finish on this car. Wheel lip molding. No one more dents in it. Cowl panel to hood to feather to door. Look at this. Look at this guy. This is as nice as it gets. It's really, really a nice straight fitting car. Correct wiper arms. We definitely have to change those blades. They are so out of place on this car. We've got to get Donnie to put a set of uh, Argent uh, pedal housing blades on this thing. Trim around the front window. No marks whatsoever. Original VIN tag still intact. Dash itself, looking through here, I can't see any uh, cracks or warpage or, or distortions or anything on the vinyl pad itself. It does have a sun shade fade uh, tint window in front of it. The metal part of the dash where it translations to the base of the windshield is just as sweet as you'd ever want to find. It really looks good. There's absolutely no dirt down in the corners, uh, no deterioration or no rust or anything from the years. I don't see anything at all that's uh, detrimental on it. Uh, really looks good. Obviously, the car has a vinyl top. Uh, has a lot of character to this car. You know, it would look a little bit more plain if it did not have this vinyl top on it. A uh, nice fitment to where it fits into the uh, gutter there. Sail panel. There's no evidence whatsoever of any uh, lifting or any air underneath this uh, vinyl, vinyl lid. Drip rail. <clears throat> really don't feel anything. It's as nice as can be. Check this window fitment out. Tinted glass on the side too. But look how nice that fits. You couldn't get this guy wet inside with a hose if you tried. Little patina on the original chrome door handle. Um, see a little tiny specks. Nothing really through, but the, you know you can see that it does have some age to it, some patina. The correct non-adjustable Mopar mirror. Um, on the driver's door. Door fitment's very nice on this car too. You can see that. Very, very nice. GTX designation on the side with our double stripe. The way they came in 1968. Um, rocker panel molding. No heel marks. No dinghies or dents whatsoever on it. It's nice and fresh and clean looking also. Wheel lip molding in the back. Again, no dents at all, absolutely none. Tin everywhere, no filler, no bondo. Really nice, solid car. Back window the same way. I can't tell if it's fitted or not. I can't really tell. Look in here, I can't reach the center. 
to read it either, so it may or may not be tinted. A little bit of a dinghy right here when someone was installing this trim, they gave it a little tap with a hammer there that they shouldn't have, but you got to really look to see it. You certainly wouldn't remove it or replace it. Window itself is very nice. The hat rack in the back, the shelf, um, no fade, no distortion. It, it, it could almost be the original one. It sure looks like it is. Wow. Pretty good condition there. Um, side marker light in the back, same as the front, nice and round. And that's the entirety of the uh, driver's side. This is a very, very nice straight car. Uh, the paint on it, we still didn't find a scratch or a mark in the paint. I didn't find a single one. Uh, this is about as nice a paint job as you could ever hope for on the car. Certainly three times as nice as it was when it was born new, for sure. 15 inch torque thrust style polished aluminum wheels. Uh, really adds a lot of character to this. And we just put a set of these tires on it. Just put it. The tires that were on it were all dry rotted. And I was driving a car, couldn't figure out why the thing had been making all this. Just didn't feel right. It felt rough as heck. We got it up on a rack, we found out why. You could take, put your fingernail uh, through all the cracks in the tire on the inside and the outside. Never even noticed it. So there's a whole new round of rubber on this guy. All four brand new. They might have five miles on them. That's it. Perfect side, gorgeous front, adjust the hood down, just the hair, and we got two more sides to go back in there. Okay, rear section. Again, check this out. Eighth of an inch, just like the hood. Couldn't get any better than this. This is like right on the money. I love this paint. It's difficult to see it, especially in light colors. Black cars, you can sometimes pick out little things on them, but on this car, you it's yellow. You're not gonna see it. But I am telling you that this paint is as nice a paint as you would ever hope to find on any car, whether it's this GTX or a Chevelle or a Olds 442 or whatever have you. A little bit of the same as the hood. This guy got to go down just a hair to make it line up just a little bit better on the ends. Where these are normally totally destroyed, this one has a little tiny bit of patina. Uh, this plaque on the back here, the fascia, that came standard on a GTX. Most of these are really in bad shape. This one is not. Through their center, the uh, argent finish is nice as can be. And again, like I said, a little tiny bit of, can hardly notice it, but there's a little tiny bit of patina in the chrome in that section on top here. That's it. Um, fitment is nice. Uh, the red paint in the inset is nice as can be. Your backup lights are nice and clear. The um, tail lights, two horseshoes, one on each side. Just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Bumper fitment. Right on the mounting on that one too. Couldn't get any better than that. That's as nice fit as you'll ever find. Must be the original selling uh, Dodge dealer. Uh, their little emblem on the back of the uh, bumper there. The correct style exhaust tips for 1968. That's the way this car would have come. Uh, chrome on the back of the bumper. Just as sweet as you ever hope to find. There's no dents or marks or anything in it from the years, or any any marks on the top of it either, from people laying things on it or their feet or whatever. It's just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. That's a nice back end of a car. So far, we got everything one, two, three, and other than two little minute adjustments, that's the only thing we found so far. Still haven't found a scratch, a dent, or a stone chip. One more side. Okay, passenger side or last side here. Again, side marker light, fitment nice, and the lenses are nice and clean and clear of it also. You can hear it's all tin there. There's no bondo, no filler whatsoever. Absolutely none. Turn around this side of the back light. Just as nice as you ever want to find. Trim at the base, just the same as on the other side. Really, really nice condition. Fender look molding. Same as the other two, that gives us three for three, GTX designation, which by the way, the other one didn't have any deterioration or patina or anything on it, nor does this one. Really, really nice. And I forgot to mention the wipes whiskers on the other side. Uh, they're in excellent condition too, as the ones are on this side. Drip rail. Same as the other side, as nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, fitment of the front window to the rear. You can see that there's no way this car's going to leak any water on you. Um, 
few little tiny marks on this one, hardly noticeable. The other one has a few more. This one has a little tiny bit, but you've got to really look to see it. Door to the quarter. That could go in just a hair. Just a hair. Trim around our uh, front wing area. That one over there was free of uh, any patina also, by the way. Really nice fitment there. Chrysler Pentastar, original. Trim around the front window. A couple marks here. When someone was installing this, apparently they got a little overzealous and tapped on it a little bit too hard. Again, you wouldn't replace it. You got to really look at the right angle to see it. But there are a couple of very, very minor hammer dents here from them installing this trim. These wiper blades got to go. They really start to irritate me. Got to put the other ones on. Trim around the front window again the same way. Look at this fit here though. Correct style antenna with the correct base on it. Trim around the uh, front wheel. Another marker light just as sweet as you'd ever want to find. And we're back where we started again. It's a 1968 Plymouth GTX. You can call it a high-end roadrunner or whatever you want. It's the same basic body style. It's a B-body Mopar but a lot more amenities than a Roadrunner ever came with in 1968. 68 Roadrunners were very, um, really stripped down vehicles. They came out with them uh, uh, early in the year and uh, it was an absolute hit. Chrysler had no idea that they were going to sell as many as they did. They came out as a base car with a taxi cab interior and a tar paper floor in it. And a, they, most of them had a four-speed 383 with no steering, no brakes, no nothing. And uh, they sold like hotcakes. You couldn't get Chrysler couldn't make enough of them. This is a car that is the same body style as a two-door hardtop Roadrunner for 1968. But this guy has a 440 in it as opposed to a 383. Has a lot more chrome, a lot more appointments, a bucket seat interior. You had your choice of a console or a flop-down armrest. Uh, this particular one does have a console and a shifter on the console. If you got the armrest, you got the shifter on the console. Uh, GTX came with the stripe on the side of it. It came with the uh, chrome treatment around the back part of it, uh, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. A lot of amenities on this car compared to a, uh, um, a, a Roadrunner. It just has a lot of additions to it. You know, rocker panel moldings, everything was a little bit higher end. And the interior was so much more high end than a Roadrunner. You know, a very, very spartan interior in a Roadrunner. This guy got some really nice padded bucket seats. It has wood grain on the dashboard. Uh, just a higher end car, very, very high end car. So you still have the same kind of a look on a dressed up 68 Roadrunner. And that's what you get in the GTX. Plus a 440 engine as opposed to a 383. Had a lot more smoke than a 383 ever thought of having. These cars really ran well, very well. Um, it's a nice car. It's available here at Hangsters. We just went over it. Other than adjusting the door, a deck, and a hood, I didn't find a stone chip or a mark. Absolutely none. Uh, you watch Devin uh, video the thing, and uh, uh, he's going to have about 90 photos up for you to take a look at. They're high resolution. You can blow them up, take a look at every little tiny aspect of this car. Uh, and we try to get everybody to come down and look at them in person, but a lot of times we know you can't. You're in California or Maine or Oregon. You're not going to jump on a bird and come and look at the car, and that's why we're doing these videos. And uh, Devin puts them together, and it, it takes about five hours for him to do one of these videos from beginning to end because we do a walk around, we do an interior, we do an engine presentation, we do an undercarriage, uh, we do a drive, um, and then we do the uh, engine sound in the front with the running, and I rev it a few times, and the exhaust sound. So you have pretty much everything that you're going to see if you would fly down and take a look at the car in person. If anything in addition is needed, simply just give us a call and we'll certainly uh, try to accommodate you in any way that we can. But for now, this is as good as we can do presenting it as we have now. Our videos are up to about 35, 38 minutes, so got a lot of information in that amount of time, plus the 90 photos that you can take and blow up and take a look at the car. This is available at Hangsters, and we've got about, I don't know, about 78 other ones here for you to look at too. Okay, interior of our 68 Plymouth GTX. Uh, headliner, just nice and tight, just the way it should be. Dome light still functioning. 
How about that? Uh, trim around the uh, base of the uh, headliner, uh, nice and tight just the way it should be. Your panels in the front here that transition down along the uh, uh, A pillars, uh, really nice, not all deteriorated up. Dash pad uh, needs glued down a little bit right there. We put something on that and glue it down, it's starting to come up a little bit. But the pad itself is uh, nice, it's no cracks or no marks, nothing whatsoever in it. Sun visors, uh, someone's finished them, they've redone them in uh, black cloth, uh, which doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt it one way or the other, but they're black cloth as opposed to being black uh, cardboard. So, uh, wood grain on a dash is nice as can be, both sides, everything still retains its original wheel radio in it. Padded dash itself is nice everywhere. Trash tray. Uh, let's see. Gauge cluster is just really nice, nice and clear yet. Let's see if it works once we go for our ride. The uh, horn ring has a little bit of patina on it across the top and around the horn ring itself. But the steering wheel is the correct Mopar steering wheel and it doesn't have any cracks or breaks in it, which is really unusual. Nice soft pad in the center of it. it does have the console. Lid needs tightened. It's common. Those are little stamped tin nuts that they use to hold the uh, lid onto the hinge itself, which has a pretty healthy spring on it. And uh, what happens is it just pushes it up through the years. You can put a set of uh, self-tapping nuts on there, and that holds it back down where it's supposed to be. I have to get Donnie to attack that for us. Uh, trio of gauges, uh, oil pressure, temp, and uh, voltage. Uh, nice car inside. The original uh, door panel is still intact on it. The um, chrome on the door handle will release itself. The original is good. Same as the uh, window crank in the front, both sides. The uh, armrests front and rear are really nice. Trash trays in the rear ones. Um, seats on the back are nicest you'd ever hope to find. The seats in this car, the interior uh, appointments, are just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Uh, nicely padded uh, seats, front and rear, uh, and they are the correct material that Mopar released with these cars also. Uh, Plymouth designation on the back, just the way it should be. Full complement of seat belts in it too, by the way. It has uh, uh, seat belts in the, uh, yeah, they got to be in the front, I just haven't found it yet. Well, how about that? we got seat belts in the rear, but we don't have them in the front. So we're going to have to install a set of seat belts in the front of this guy, but we do have them in the rear already. Um, loop pile carpeting, the way this car came from the factory. <coughs> um, just a real nice setup. I don't see anything that's detrimental on the inside of this car. Everything fits as though it should. Uh, a little, no, that's Jeff's fingerprints there. I thought there's some marks on it, but it isn't. It's Jeff's fingerprints. Um, Everything in this car is really nice. I don't see anything other than uh, we've got to tighten this guy up just a hair, glue this down just a tiny bit, and we got to definitely put some uh, seat belts in the front of this for you. It's definitely got them in the back, but not in the front. So great interior in this car, fantastic outside on this car. So we still have undercarriage, drive, some other stuff to show you. It's Hangsters Daytona Beach, really nice GTX. It works. 68. Plymouth GTX. Turn signal left. It's not green, but it is beating itself to death over here, showing us we're turning left. Now we got another one over here that shows us we're turning right. Temperature gauge is going to come up. We just started. There's quarter tank of fuel. Uh, amp gauge is functioning, although we do have a set of auxiliary gauges down here. So um, the temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge, and the uh, voltmeter. So we have all three as an auxiliary. What are the chances of the radio working? Nope. A little wheel radio, but it's not working. Wipers. Wipers are functioning as they should. We got to get rid of those stupid aftermarket blades. They got to go. Donnie's going to have to get us a set of uh, Argent ones for it. Um, no remote mirror, just a conventional mirror. Nice car. We gotta remember to glue that down too. Have to glue that. Uh, other than that, we got a nice car. We're gonna go for a ride, see how it runs. Uh, I know it runs good because I drove it for about three days. 
uh, before we got a few of the items that needed to be addressed done. Like when I drove it, it had no headlights. I didn't find that until I was on my way home, about 8.30. Uh, nice car, nice tight steering. It's just better now that it has new tires on instead of this old dry rod and junkers I had when I drove it first. Got four brand new sneakers on it right now. It's down the road, straight as an arrow. Nice as could be. the brakes right now because the guys behind me, I got about three cars behind me. They'd be a little upset if I hammer the brakes now. It's a nice driving car. It has a real nice sound to it. Um, it goes down a road. We're going 60 mile an hour right now in a 40 mile an hour zone. That's okay. We're usually 90 in the 35, so... Nice sound to it. Nice original Mopar. mechanically sound car. Uh, <clears throat> it had some issues when I first drove it home, but uh, like I said, I had it for a few days, but at this point, uh, all those issues from what I can see have been resolved. The tires was one. It has four brand new sneakers on it now. And uh, turn signals work. The headlights work. That was a biggie. Okay, this is the underside of a 1968 Plymouth GTX. Uh, butternut yellow. I don't know what Mopar calls it, but Chevy calls it butternut yellow. Um, black interior. Really, really nice straight car. <coughs> I believe this is the original motor that came in the car. It's a 68 date code engine. It's an HP motor. It's designated as such on top. Uh, we didn't find the numbers on it. That it could be underneath the distributor. I can't really tell. Um, but at any rate, it's a, a motor that's been out of the car. You can see it's been completely tanked and completely rebuilt from bottom to top. Everything is new in this engine. Uh, Tranny does not have the uh, heat shield here, which everyone does leave off. <coughs> to try to give it a little more ventilation, keep that torque converter as cool as you possibly can. Keep that oil cool. Someone has added a set of front disc brakes to this vehicle. They're all brand new and fresh, new calipers new rotors, new backing plates, and the new fixture to hold the, uh, uh, for the spindles that hold the uh, uh, disc brakes. That's all new and all new associated hardware. Uh, new mounts on the uh, front sway bar, uh, ceramic coated uh, yeah, inch and three quarter headers uh, go into a three inch collector that goes into a two and a half inch uh, primary pipe with an H pipe. Deep pan, 727 tranny, and it does have a deep pan on it. Um, drain the oil here. There's no oil leaks whatsoever present on the engine, the bell housing area, or the transmission. At least not to this point anyway. That doesn't mean a year from now you're not going to find some drips of oil on the floor. It's a muscle car. It's inherited. Some frames in the front, uh, just really nice. I mean, they're in really great condition. The skirts for the uh, fender wells in the front, no one's made any attempt to jack it up on those through the years. Let's see. No jack marks actually on the uh, front sub. A eh, couple little ones right here. A couple little ones. The original uh, fuel line still intact on the car. 
original parking brake still hooked up and functional original brake line still on this car too pretty much a rust free car uh, pretty nice setup on it here it, 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 somebody spent some time in uh, cleaning this thing up underneath and uh, still has some of the original overspray paint on it uh, especially through the center section the uh, floor pans appear to be original I don't see any replacement uh, indications uh, just looking at it from underneath here uh, the pinch welds are still evident on the uh, rocker panels to the floor pans uh, let's see a little tear in the hole here in the frame from shipping at some point of its life somebody had a hook in there and pulled it too tight actually pulling it that way that they tore that hole open a little bit it's certainly nothing that compromises the structural rigidity of this car or, or its integrity it's fine the way it is it's not going to cause any issues in the future uh, no leaks whatsoever on the eh, there's one drip there's one drip of oil on the tail shaft not enough to drip down but there is a little tiny bit of a residue there uh, just normal usage actually that's a real tight tail shaft on that too uh, let's see two and a half inch pipes going into two flow master mufflers uh, all the exhaust system is new you can see that the, uh, the headers themselves are ceramic coated <coughs> the H pipe this is all this is all new uh, exhaust system on the vehicle subframes in the rear the torque boxes just as nice as you'd ever hope to find jack mark here jack mark here a little bit of a tear here also pulling that way whoever tied this guy down got a little overzealous with his ratchet and uh, just kind of went overboard on it but uh, again it didn't hurt anything structurally on the car new shocks in the front too they're not brand new but they're, they've been replaced they are replacement shocks uh, six springs on the uh, left left seven on the right uh, for torque bias on this vehicle eight and three quarter heavy duty Mopar Ren no leaks at all new U joints both rear and front drum brakes in the back <clears throat> this guy would have come with 11 by 3 in the front 11 by 2 and a half in the back the stopping power of these things with the standard drum brakes was astronomical they stop better than most cars did with four wheel discs Corvette namely um, I'm going to call them uh, two and a quarter inch pipes transitioning out of the Flowmasters going toward the uh, correct style stainless exhaust tips that go out underneath the uh, rear bumper. Someone has just installed a new pair, and I mean brand new, of uh, uh, air shocks on this vehicle. Uh, the lines and everything are all <clears throat> brand new and fresh. New gas tank, new uh, sending, yep, new sending unit with the stainless lines on it also. Uh, floor pans are just as nice in the back. The uh, trunk, boy, oh boy, I can't really tell if it's been replaced or not. If they did replace the trunk, they did an exemplary job. There's every little tiny spot well that's still evident. Uh, everything looks to be just the way it was when it left the factory. Subframes in the back. <coughs> Losing my voice for trying to talk upside down here. <coughs> um, subframes in the back uh, are as nice as you're ever going to find one. Uh, a little bit of splatter undercoating through the entirety. You can see on the uh, floor pans it still retains a lot of its splatter undercoating we did have the car freshened up and painted uh, like a semi-flat black color underneath that give it a lot of look a little bit of a more pizzazz than just plain old gray undercoating on it the back part of the uh, rear drums are just as clean and nice as you'd ever want to find the transitional piece of uh, structure across the back doesn't have any pull marks at all on it absolutely none zero uh, nice curvature yet to the uh, leaf springs that are on the vehicle. Um, fresh round of rubber. We just put this on. There's not 50 miles on these tires yet. In fact, I don't even know if there's 25. Um, nice undercarriage. You can see there's no seeps or leaks or anything at this point. Uh, everything is nice and tight and taut the way it should be. Origi a lot of originality too. Original park and brake, original fuel lines, original brake lines. Um, and nothing needed to be replaced. They did replace the shocks in the back. It's a great look at undercarriage. I don't see anything on this thing that uh, uh, I can point a finger at that's, uh, that's not nice. It's just a, it's a great uh, 1968 Plymouth GTX. Uh, rich man's roadrunner. 
So it's here at Hangsters at Daytona Beach. If you're in the market for a Roadrunner or a GTX, this is your guy. Take a look at it. It's a great color combination and it runs just like it looks.